All right, here we are in the kitchen and we're about to get real earthy on you. You've probably heard before that fermented foods are good for the body. Well, our next guest is showing us all the benefits of fermentation, including how to ferment our own vinegars. Kristen Shockey tells us all about her new book, Home Brewed Vinegar. So it's really allowing the microbes to get in there and kind of change, transform your food into something that is stable. So let's take apple juice, for example, right? So what happens is those little yeasts get in there and they um, consume the sugar and create alcohol. Huh. But that's one place you can kind of save it if you remove the air. One in front of me is an apple cider vinegar we made here on our farm in 2010. Wow. As long as the oxygen is off of it, it's stable it gets more and more interesting flavors and uh yeah wow i know that beer is fermented right there was a documentary called how beer saved the world kind of with the same premise right well yeah and and funny enough beer and sourdough are kind of the same thing where the sugars and the starches have been consumed by yeast to create something. And you can actually make vinegar with beer. Vinegar is a two-step fermentation. Most are one step. With vinegar, you got to get that alcohol first so that the acetic acid bacteria can then turn it into vinegar. That is a fun fact. All right, what are we starting today? So today we're going to make some apple cider vinegar. Um, and I do want to say that this is actually one of the easiest ferments that you can get yourself into. In fact, if you just want to start with the cider or start with the beer or start with a bottle of wine, you know, you've already, somebody's done that first step for you. Um, then you're just going to add a little, uh, vinegar start starter, which is, uh, in this case, just some raw and pasteurized vinegar, but we're starting with juice today. I've got a gallon of just apple juice here. And what I did is I've got some yeast that I hydrated in a quarter cup of water. And it's just a half a teaspoon of basic wine yeast. It doesn't really matter. Just some yeast to get the fermentation started. So I know I said it's a two-step fermentation, but we're going to do this simultaneously. We're going to throw the yeast in there and they're going to start consuming that sugar. And then the next thing we're going to throw in there is some raw apple cider vinegar. If you happen to have a mother, you could throw that in there, but most people don't starting out. Mm -hmm. So this is just one cup of raw unpasteurized vinegar. And that's it. We're going to give that a little stir. I didn't bring a big spoon, so that's a wimpy stir, but <laughs> stir later. And then vinegar bacteria need oxygen. So we're going to give it this little cap from a coffee filter. And now we can keep it on a spot on our counter. And that's it. In about a month, you're going to see maybe this little growth on top. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, I can see the growth. Okay. And it looks like a SCOBY for people who make um, kombucha, but this is a vinegar mother. So the acetic acid bacteria have made themselves a little raft by creating um, cellulose as they go. Huh. Do you take the little cellulose float out or you leave it in? I usually leave it in until I'm ready to bottle it. And then that's the really important thing. When we get to bottling, um, you notice there's no little cellulose mm -hmm. on top of these guys. It's because once we bottle, we take that off. Um, these are still live, but we take it off. As soon as we remove the oxygen, the vinegar bacteria kind of go to sleep and can no longer do that um, process, which is actually very important because if it continues to do that, what happens is that the vinegar bacteria, once they're done with the alcohol, they look around and they're like, I'm still hungry. They start eating the acid. And eventually, if you left this on the oxygen long enough, you'd end up with water. I think that is entirely fascinating. Science is so cool. Many things you can learn, I'm assuming, in your book. Yep, absolutely. Anything that has sugar can become vinegar. So in this book, it's like, turmeric, dates, whatever fruit you have in your backyard, you can make into vinegar. 
so fascinating, Kirsten. And I'm so glad that you shared this with us. One more question before we let you go. If you could sum it up in a sentence, why are fermented things and vinegar so important for our body? Um, because we evolved with these foods and we need live microbes in our, in our world and in our body. And we've got Kirsten's apple cider vinegar recipe posted on New Day's website, so go check it out. We didn't make this, no. You poured it out of a bottle.